Hi and welcome to White Wolf Yoga and for today's class, Yoga for Jiu Jitsu. This was a session that's been requested by a few of our subscribers who are looking for a yoga practice that's going to help complement their performance and also aid their recovery. Within this class, we're going to be looking at improving our strength, our coordination and our balance. We're going to be looking at increasing our mental performance and awareness and also increasing our range of movement and mobility. Thanks for watching and see you on the mat. Okay, so we're going to begin in tabletop position. So we just want to find ourselves on all fours, aligning the shoulders over the elbows and the wrists, making sure the fingers are spread nice and wide, placing the knees directly beneath the hips and make sure the toes are flat to the floor. So we'll push down through the hands, push down through the toes, lift the hips, draw the heart forward, and we'll pull the shoulders away from the ears as we open up into a cow stretch. Then we're going to move the opposite direction, so we'll bring the navel in towards the spine and allow the, the back to arch here as we push the heart between the shoulder blades and drop the head, bringing the chin towards the chest. So this is our cow and cat, really nice for just starting to mobilise the spine. Let's take a few rounds, seeing if we can match the movement of the body with the breath. So we inhale to press up, and when you're ready, exhale, push back, really press through the hands, push through the knees and the tops of the feet. Let's go once more on each side as we inhale. We'll press up, lift and open, really draw that heart forward. And then exhale, pressing and rounding the back all the way to the sky, holding here in cat stretch. Maybe you can give the head a little shake just to release some tension from the neck and from the shoulders. Can you really pull that navel, that core, deep in towards the spine? Take a breath here, inhale, and then as we exhale, we're going to move the hips backwards towards the heels as we rest in our child's pose. So the belly and the chest connect to the top of the thighs, and we really reach the arms forward away from the body, and just allow the forehead to drop to the mat. If the forehead doesn't comfortably reach the floor, you can make a little pillow by bringing the hands on opposite elbows, and use the forearms to rest the head down here. Really just settling into this pose, allowing the body to completely relax and let go. This is going to help to open a little into our hips and our groins. And just allow a softening and a relaxation of the whole of the body. And we'll just take a little bit of time here to connect to our breath. Just noticing how you're breathing, where the breath starts. Maybe you're breathing from the nose or it might be from the mouth. And notice where the breath moves to in the body. So which part of the body rises when you take an inhale? And which part of the body do you feel relaxed with the exhale? And to help build our mental focus and awareness, we'll try and stay connected to our breath. And we'll think about where you can remember Keeping the breath flowing in and out through the nose, that's going to calm the central nervous system. And we'll think about the breath flowing in and out of the belly, so that on an inhale, you can feel the belly rise. And on an exhale, you feel the belly relax and fall. And once you've got that rhythm, we'll look forward, back towards the hands, and take an inhale and pop all the way back up into our tabletop. Nice and strong through the arms, engage with your core. Pushing into the hands, can we lift up the right leg into a tiger pose position? So we're pointing the toes towards the ceiling, lifting the heart forward, and again, the shoulders pull back and away from the ears, and that'll stop us scrunching up. And we're just gonna drop the right foot over towards the left side, just to feel the hip open out here. And then can we take that right leg square, press into the right hand, and release the left arm away from the body. Then we see that right leg, we're gonna extend it back so that we're as long as we can be from the left fingers to the right toes. Use that core to help you maintain strength and balance. Inhale, lengthen. As we exhale, can we bring the left elbow to the right knee? A little bit like cow and cat with the spine. So we inhale, lift, open, and exhale, round off and draw in. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Okay, inhale back. But then we're going to exhale left hand down. And take the right foot on the floor, but we're keeping that right leg extended away. 
And I'm not really going to push into that right heel, just to feel a nice release from the sole of the foot, stretching into the Achilles, up into the calf and towards the hamstring. Now finding a little bit of balance here, can we turn the right toes to the side? Try and plant the whole of that right foot into the floor, so you're pushing on the outer edge of the foot. Press through the left hand, and can we bring the right hand onto the right hip and feel our body, our chest open out to the back. So see this top hip and top shoulder, they're rotating backwards. The bottom shoulder and the bottom hip are pulling through. Nice and strong in that left arm. Maybe if you feel you can, release that right hand from the hip and send it up and into the air. Then we're just going to mobilize our shoulder joints here as we, as we work on our balance at the same time. So can we inhale, lengthen, and as we exhale, reach the right arm forward and then let it sweep the floor and inhale it back up. Do three of these. Exhale down. Sweep the floor with the fingers. Inhale up. Two more. Exhale. Inhale. One more. Exhale. Inhale. Here as you exhale, can you bring the right bicep by the ear and stretch the fingers away from the body. A nice lateral stretch all the way along that right side. If anyone fancies a little bit more challenge through balance, go ahead and pick up the right leg. Flex the right toes. Keep the eye gaze focus. If you want a bit more of a challenge, you could try maybe looking up towards that right wrist. If you feel wobbly though, it's much easier if you look to the floor. Let's hold three. Doing really well. Keep drawing in that core two. And one, planting the right foot and the right hand down, bringing the right knee back into tabletop. Let's rest and breathe through child's pose. Hips to the heels, belly and chest onto the thighs, forehead to the mat, or onto your, your little pillow with the forearms. In and out through the nose with the breath, purifying the air as it enters the body, and breathing in and out through the belly. When you feel ready to continue, let's move. We'll look forward towards the fingers and inhale back up and into tabletop. So finding that nice, strong tabletop foundation to work from. And then we'll go ahead and lift the left leg up, tiger pose. Toes to the ceiling, heart pulls forward, shoulders draw back and away. Dropping that left foot over towards the right side, just to open out into the hip. And then we'll bring it back square. Keep the left leg in tiger, but reach the right arm up. And then we want to find length through the body, so extend that left leg away. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale as we lengthen. Exhale to draw in. One more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, right hand down. Left leg steps back. Keep that left leg extended. And we'll push into the heel here. So again, nice opener for that back line into the leg. Press and breathe. Push that heel as far back as you can so that it feels nice. A nice deep release. And then we're going to find that balance, find that strength. So we turn the left toes to the side and we want to plant the whole of the left foot onto the floor. Slowly bringing up the left hand onto the left hip and find that openness. So we want to be careful that we're not so sort of in this square position where the shoulder and the hip are dropping down. Pick them up and open the body. Okay, if you need to, you can stay here. But if you want a little bit more, try reaching that left arm into the air. And we'll go with those sweeps, so we'll inhale. And exhale, take it down. Inhale up, matching the movement of the body with the breath. Exhale. Inhale. One more in your own time. Exhale down to inhale up. And then exhale, bring that left arm over. So bicep by the ear, stretch the left fingertips away from the body. If you want to try the full position, you can try maybe picking up that back leg, the left leg, and flexing the toes. Again, we want to fix our eye gaze, so our eye gaze is really important with balance. It's easier if you look to the floor. It's a bit more tricky if you start to look up towards that top wrist. Hold and breathe. Three, keep drawing the navel to spine. Keep the breath flowing. Two, and one, release. Left foot and the left hand back down. Slide the knee into tabletop, and we'll push the hips backwards to the heels as we rest in our child's pose. Okay, but in this child's pose, we're going to take the hands and we're going to bring them by the feet. And then can we clasp the hands together and inhale to reach the arms up and exhale, draw the arms forward towards the mat. 
so they're never going to get to the mat. And that's not important how close they are or aren't to the floor. But we just want to feel a nice deep stretch all across the shoulders. Breathe in here, slow and deep. Take another three. Arms draw up and then forward towards the head. Two. And one. Well done, let's release. Hands back down and slide them forward all the way back to our regular child's pose. Okay, so from child's pose, we're going to come up again into tabletop. Then we're going to tuck our toes under, press into the hands and lift the hips into down dog. So nice and easy with our first down dog. We're not worrying about our alignment a bit too much with this one at all. We just want to pedal into the heels, just get a little bit more deeply into the calves and the hamstrings. I'm feeling the hips pick to the sky. Maybe moving the hips side to side. It's quite nice to stretch out into the waist and the side of the body. Relaxing the head between the arms and maybe giving the head a shake out again, just like we did in our warm up to release tension from the neck and from the shoulders. And then this walk in the dog, this pedaling in the heels up and down, we're gonna step all the way in towards a forward fold. So one by one, we bring the feet into the hands, keep the knees nice and soft, especially if you're tighter in the hamstrings, and just drop into ragdoll. A nice gentle forward fold with the hands on opposite elbows, chin towards the chest, feeling heavy and loose within the body, we'll swing and sway from side to side. You might want to see how you feel here, alternating between bends on one leg and straightening the other. And really connect to each of your legs and compare how they feel. You might notice a tighter side. If you do, that tighter leg hold in on it. Spend a few more extra breaths here and just see if you can begin to balance out that alignment through posture. And let's soften again when you're ready, both knees, release the hands from the elbows and inhale. Come up halfway, lift, flat back, navelling towards the spine. From our flat back position, we'll root down through the soles of the feet and inhale the arms all the way up into the air. Hands come into prayer, just give a little lift to the heart here. And then as we exhale, we'll take the hands down. We'll bring them past our heart centre and into mountain pose. So we're going to flow back down to the ground. Inhale as we reach, arms up. Bend the knees and exhale, take it down to our forward fold. This time, just letting the hands dangle towards the floor, wherever feels good for you. Inhale as we lift and lengthen flat back. Exhale to bend the knees and place the hands flat on the floor. And we're going to step our legs back into tabletop. But then from tabletop, we're going to come to leg all the way down onto our belly. So through these next few poses, we're going to work on trying to really open the chest, trying to strengthen the lower back, and that'll help us, especially if we tend to, through our, our practice, feel a little bit hunched in the, upper, in the upper back and the shoulders. We're trying to counter that through these postures. So we've got our feet about hip distance apart. We're gonna push into the toes, place the shoulders over the elbows, and the forearms are flat on the floor with the fingers spread nice and wide. So this is Sphinx pose. So you're in, press into the hands, press into the forearms and into the hips. Push the toes flat into the floor. So you're pushing the whole of the ground away from you with every part of the body that connects. And as you push the ground away, pull the heart forward. Again, the shoulders draw away from the ears. Maybe you can send the eye gaze up to the sky. Hold and breathe here for three. Feeling strong. Your knees might even lift up off the floor because you're pressing that deeply. You're really engaging through the thighs. Hold in two. And one. Relax, take the hands down underneath the shoulders and lay flat down onto the belly. So making sure again the feet haven't slid out of position, we'll keep them in line with the hips, the toes stay flat on the floor. We're going to work into cobra. So with cobra we're not using the arms, we're not using the hands, they're just resting in position underneath the shoulders. And we'll take an inhale and see if we can lift the chin and the chest up off the floor. Don't worry how high you get. Squeeze the elbows into the midline, into the ribs. Push through the toes, push through the hips. Hold and breathe for three. Keep lifting as you can. Two. One. Relax all the way back down. Our 
option to modify, going a bit more challenging, take the hands behind the back, clasp them together, push through the toes, push through the hips, draw the arms back and lift, hold for three, keep breathing as you hold, two, and one, well done, release, hands come all the way back down underneath the shoulders. Okay, taking an inhale here, we'll push up into tabletop, and as we exhale, we'll bring our hips back onto the heels for child's pose. Maybe move the hips softly and gently from side to side, just seeing how that feels into the lower back. And before we switch up our position, we're just going to take a little flow, and this will help really find, help us to find our rhythm with the body and with the breath, and at the same time, really help to mobilize and open through the spine, through the shoulders and through the chest. When you're ready then, looking forward from child's pose, inhale into tabletop. Exhale down to knees, chest, chin. So we squeeze the elbows in towards the ribs. Lower the chin and the chest towards the floor, the hips stay lifted. Looking forward, scoop up and through into cobra. Or if you feel quite open in the back and strong, you can break the, bring the hands further down the body push into the hands and lift into a full up dog so the thighs are lifted, the toes stay flat to the floor rather than tucked under. From our cobra or our up dog, we'll bring the knees back down and push into child's pose. So that's our little sequence, let's go two more. Inhale, roll up tabletop. Exhale down to knees, chest, chin. Inhale into cobra or up dog. Exhale back into child's pose just one more round inhale roll up exhale take it down inhale scoop up exhale push back and down hold for three two and one okay so we're going to work now into our hips so we'll slide up from child's pose back into tabletop. Then we're going to bring our right knee forward. So we want to slide that right knee just behind the right thumb and take the left leg away from the body. So just making sure that left leg's staying in a nice straight line, that the toes are flat. Notice if you're lifted a little bit here on that right side, you can always place a rolled up blanket or a cushion here just for a little bit of support. You want to try and feel as nice and square as you can through the hips. We'll bring the fingertips either side of the knee, the front knee. We'll press into them as we inhale and lift through the heart. And then as we exhale, can you bring the head forward, lengthen the body, and then when you feel that you're deep enough, take the belly and the chest down over that right thigh and rest with the hands and the head. If the hand position can stay at the side of the knee, you can find your pillow again, hands on opposite elbows, or you can reach the arms out in front of the body, your choice. And then let's try and relax and breathe into this space. So a really nice pose for increasing that flexibility on the outer hips. The longer that we hold, the deeper that we go into the body. And it takes us at least around 30 seconds to properly stretch a muscle, but if we're able to hold a little bit longer and breathe through, and we'll work not only on increasing the flexibility on a muscular level, but also into the connective tissue, into the ligaments, the tendons, the fascia of the body. So we'll really try and hang in here and breathe as long as, as we feel comfortable. Did you get any little uh, pins and needles sensations or pain in the joints? Always take that as an indication to ease out of the posture. But it's okay if you feel like a nice deep stretch. That's the sensation that we're, that we're looking for. Keep that breath slow and deep. That'll keep our central nervous system in the parasympathetic mode. And with a calm central nervous system, the muscles are allowed to relax. And it's when the muscles are relaxed that we can really build on our flexibility. Just a few more breaths if you can. and slowly when you're ready we'll walk the hands back up place them either side of the right knee 
push them into the hands, slide the right leg all the way up and into tiger, and then we'll just drop that right foot to the left side. Maybe twirling out the ankle as well if you need to. Maybe straightening and bending that leg a couple of times just for, for the knee. And then when you're feeling ready, bring that left knee, uh, right knee back onto the floor and we'll work with our left knee moving forward. Okay, so inhale. And exhale, slide the left knee behind the left thumb and walk the right leg back and away from the body. If you're feeling a bit lopsided and you need to balance up, use a bolster, a rolled up blanket or a pillow. Take your time getting into the pose, making sure that you're comfortable with it. Bring the fingertips either side of the left knee. Inhale, open, lift, and exhale, bring the head forward. Maintain that length and then relax into this left side with either the hands staying at the knee. You can go on opposite elbows or you can outstretch them all the way in front of the body. And let's try and relax and breathe here. Feel that with each exhale. We're letting go of tightness, of tension. With each exhale, you're falling a little deeper, a little heavier into the mat. Stay with that breath. If you notice the mind wander, first of all, just know that's completely natural. It's what the mind does. And see if you can take back control of the thoughts by refocusing on the breath and really focusing on how the body feels right now. And if there's a specific area of tension or tightness as you're holding this, this pose, then see if you can move the energy, move the breath there so that you feel that particular part of the body really let go as you exhale. Remember any pain in the joints or pins and needles sensations, ease off. If you're enjoying the release, just hold and breathe through. Relax the body. Imagine you could flick a magic switch and all of the muscles just turn off. So you're really falling, sinking and melting nice and deeply into this position. nice and slowly when you're ready we'll walk the hands back up towards that left knee lift the heart push into the hands slide the left knee all the way up and then drop it to the right side maybe twirl the ankle out and straighten and bend that leg a couple of times just so that it feels alive again and then we'll bring the left knee back onto the floor Okay, so we're going to take ourselves all the way up into a high kneeling position and we're going to work with a pose called camel. So with our camel, it's a nice heart, chest and shoulder opener, but it also works on the strength of our lower back. So it's really good for the core and for our alignment and posture. So feet hip distance apart. Now we'll tuck the toes under for this one. Get a nice stretch as well on the soles of the feet and also it's going to raise our heels. We bring the hands on the hips, but we're sliding the, the elbows back. So that's going to give us here just already an instant lift. We want to be careful with our back bends that we're not just shoving the hips forward like this. If you can imagine uh, the structure of the spine when I'm doing this and just pushing the hips forward, all of the vertebrae in the lower back are going to be crunching together. And over time, if we get into that habit, it's going to prevent us from really building an oak, building strength through the, the lumbar spine creating length and it's going to end up compressing and maybe catching nerves so we want to avoid avoid the pushing feeling and find much more of a lift imagine you've got a piece of string attached to your heart and it's been lifted up to the sky so lift that string as high as you can feel the space between the vertebra and the back then once you've got that see how you feel maybe gently drawing the hips forward as soon as you feel any compression in the lower back ease off lift the heart you could drop the head back if you like you can keep it forward maybe try taking one hand off the hip and reaching it back in a way holding and breathing for three 
the two, and one. Let you change side. So right hand stays on the hip or whichever one you did first. Take the other arm off and reach it back for three. Hold and breathe, two. And one, bringing that hand back onto the hip and just finding a neutral position through the spine. Just notice how you feel in the lower back now. And if you feel like you want to go again, we'll go for a second round. But if that felt enough and you want to rest, just really gently take yourself into a child's pose and sit this, this next position out. But if you're feeling like you want to go a little deeper, let's move. Again, we find that lift of the heart. Inhale, arm up. Maybe if you can, exhale and take that hand down onto the heel. Going for the other side, if you can. I get you stay straight forward or up. So we try and avoid turning the neck from side to side. Holding and breathing, keep lifting the heart. We hold for three, two, and one. And coming out of the pose the same way that you came in, hands from the heels back onto the hips. And from here, We'll bring ourselves into child's pose, nice and slowly, hips to heels, and resting onto the ground. Maybe moving the hips gently side to side. And then we'll bring ourselves back up and into kneeling, and we're gonna switch to move in the opposite direction. So we'll drop the hips to the side, and bring the legs out in front. So, with the feet hip distance apart, slowly, vertebra by vertebra, we're gonna relax down onto the mat and just bring our knees into the belly. Give yourself a hug and a squeeze, massaging from side to side. And can we take the knees out by the ribs, stack the ankles on top of the knees with the hands onto the soles of the feet, and come into happy baby pose. So this is really nice for the inner thighs and stretching into the groin. You wanna push down through the hands to draw the knees towards the floor and then use the arms to pull the legs apart. And if it feels good, rocking from side to side, it's nice for massaging the muscles in the lumbar spine, in the lower back. It's also really nice for increasing the blood flow to the kidneys and to the adrenal glands so this will help to keep our mind nice and calm too. Okay, and then we'll come back with the knees in towards the belly and the chest. So I'm gonna talk through this next position, plow pose, really slowly, stage by stage. If you've not seen this position before, it might be an idea to, to watch how you get into it first and then, then give it a go, just because it's, it's one of those positions that we want to avoid turning the neck from side to side. So if you're straining to watch the screen, have a, have a look at it first and then give it a go. We want to keep our head looking straight up, our eye gaze to the sky. So then first things first, we'll just take our legs up and into the air. And then from here, can we lift the hips and take the hands either side of the sacrum. Then we're going to allow our legs to flow backwards behind the head. And for you, it might be that they don't get all the way to the floor, and don't worry if they don't, just take them to where they go comfortably. You can always use a, a couch, or if you've got a yoga block, or a few books stacked on top of each other, just to rest the toes on, if that helps. If they do reach the floor, take them down. And now you can keep the hands here on the back for support, or if you're feeling comfortable, you can release the hands Clasp them together and pull the arms away from the body. So this is a really nice spinal stretch. We're going to really hang in and breathe through it if we can. So a good solid five slow deep breaths. If you're feeling uncomfortable, you need to come out. Don't wait for the count. Always listen to your body. And let's take a few more slow deep breaths. If you feel closed off in the neck and the throat, tilt the chin up towards the ceiling and that should open the throat and make breathing feel a little easier. Last 
popular breaths, nice and slow. Two, one. Releasing the hands, and then one by one. And we'll bring the hands back onto the sacrum and the legs up and into the air. And then softly vertebrae by vertebrae, roll all the way down. And bring the knees back in towards the belly and the chest. And take your rock from side to side. So we're going to move towards the last couple of poses. I'm going to grab for these a yoga belt. So if you've got a yoga belt or any kind of belt will work for this, then it, it might be helpful. Don't worry if you don't, you can do it without. We're going to lay, as we were, flat down onto our spine. And then we're going to keep this uh, left leg flat on the floor. Take our belt and place the right foot in the centre of the belt. And this is going to just help give us a little bit so more support as we work on flexibility the hamstring at the inner thigh and into the groin so take with the, the strap the leg in towards the body into a position that you feel a nice release at the back of the leg and up towards the calf we don't want to go too too deep too soon start nice and gently flexing the toes so pulling the right toes into the shin and pressing the heel up towards the ceiling you can either do it like this with one hand on either side of the strap or you can bring the hands together and hold it central it doesn't matter really just whatever feels right for you if you're quite open in the hamstrings you could straighten that left leg just making it more a bit more deep a bit deeper or you can keep that that left leg bent if you're tight i'd recommend this option and also last little thing don't worry if the knee's bent it doesn't have to be straight all that matters is that you feel a good release into this uh, right leg Okay then, so with the strap, we'll inhale, push through the heel. And as we exhale, can we use the strap to bring the leg a little closer in towards the body? Another two breaths here. Inhale, push through the heel. And exhale, draw the leg in towards the body. One more breath. Inhale, push. And exhale, draw the leg in. Here we hold for five. Keep breathing, keep that tension, keep that stretch. Three, two, one. Now we're not gonna place that leg down just yet. We're gonna bring both sides of the strap, both lengths, just into the right hand. And here we'll all straighten out that left leg. So if you need to soften the knee here, feel free. Keep the left hand on top of the left hip bone to stop it lifting out to the side. So keep pushing into the left hand, but we'll bring the right elbow in towards the ribs and use the right arm along with the strap to bring this right leg out to the side and see how that feels in the inner thigh. If the leg is lifted higher, if towards the head, it's gonna feel more intense. If it's lifted further away from the head, it's gonna feel a little easier so you just play around with that and find the stretch that works for you keep pushing into the left hip we do that so this doesn't happen that we roll over to that side keep pushing the left shoulder into the floor as well and you'll do three two nice work one bring in the right leg all the way back to center switch hands so we've taken the strap into the left hand the right arm goes out to the side and then we're just going to guide that right leg over towards the left a really nice stretch for that outer hip into the IT band up towards the lumbar spine hold and breathe again for three relax into this let the strap and gravity do the hard work two and one bringing it all the way back to the middle Unhook your right foot, give the right leg a little squeeze into the body and then right foot comes down and we're working on our left side. So we've got the left foot kind of in the middle of the strap, hands in position so that you can use the strap to help guide the leg in towards the body. Don't worry about a bend in the knee, but if we can, we'll extend the heel upwards to the sky. Those who are a bit more flexible, straighten out the right leg if you fancy, otherwise just keep it bent. One little, other little thing we want to watch for is hunching the neck and the shoulders, so try and really relax the shoulders. Into the floor, soften up the jaw, 
and you can gently close your eyes just to help soften all of the facial muscles. Okay, then let's inhale, press through the heel, and exhale, pull the leg in. Another couple of breaths, inhale, press. Exhale, pull. Another breath, if you can, inhale, push through the heel if there's any more room. Exhale, pull the leg in and hold and breathe here. Enjoy that stretch. Four. Two. And one. Just soften that left leg a little. Bringing the both sides of the strap into the left hand. We'll straighten out the right leg. Right hand comes onto the right hip to glue that right hip and the right shoulder into the floor. And we'll guide the left leg out to the side. You can switch up position, you can take it lower, higher. You can take it further to the floor or away from the ground. Just see what's gonna feel right for you right now. Take that option and breathe into the pose. Slow and deep, those abdominal breaths in and out through the belly, even in and out through the nose. Slowly bringing that left leg back to the midline. Change hands. So you've taken the straps, both sides of the strap into the right hand. Left arm floats out to the side. And we'll guide the left leg over towards the right. Maybe even turn the head to look towards the left thumb. Hold in three. Two. Inhale to bring the left leg all the way back to center, bending the left knee. Taking the strap off, both knees coming towards the belly, in towards the chest. And we'll move from side to side onto that lower back. Placing the feet onto the floor, arms wide. Inhale. And as we exhale, drop the knees towards the right side, turn the head towards the left. And we'll inhale to center. And exhale, knees to the left, the head towards the left. Inhale all the way to center. in towards the belly and the chest. Give yourself one last big hug and squeeze. Massaging the spine side to side. And we'll prepare to roll all the way up to seated. Three, two, and one. So come into me in a comfortable seated position. We'll just take one last breath together. On an inhale, reach, draw the arms up and into the earth. And as we exhale, we'll take the hands down all the way to the heart. Namaste. So thanks for watching, thanks for joining me in today's class, I really hope that you enjoyed it. So if you did and you'd like to stay up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Thanks again and see you soon.